Brought to you by wikivd.com. Dennis Ray Dennis Lynn Rader is an American serial killer who murdered 10 people in Sedgwick County, Kansas between 1974 and 1991. He is also known as the BTK Killer or the BTK Strangler. BTK stands for Bind, Torture, Kill, which was his infamous signature. He sent letters describing the details of the murders to police and local news outlets before his arrest. After a decade-long hiatus, Rader resumed sending letters in 2004, leading to his 2005 arrest and subsequent guilty plea. He is currently serving 10 consecutive life sentences at El Dorado Correctional Facility in Kansas. Early Life and Career Dennis Rader is the oldest of four sons born to Dorothea May Rader and William Elvin Rader. Though born in Pittsburgh, Kansas, he grew up in Wichita. According to many reports, including his confessions, he tortured animals as a child. He also had a sexual fetish for women's underwear and stole underpants from his victims and wore them himself. Rader spent 1966-1970 in the United States Air Force. Upon discharge, he moved to Park City, where he worked in the meat department of a Lee Kaziga supermarket, where his mother was a bookkeeper. He married Paula Dietz on May 22, 1971, and had two children. He attended Butler County Community College in El Dorado, earning an associate degree in electronics in 1973. He then enrolled at Wichita State University and graduated in 1979 with a bachelor's in administration of justice. Rader worked as an assembler for the Coleman Company, an outdoor supply company. He worked at the Wichita-based office of ADT Security Services from 1974 to 1988 where he installed security alarms as a part of his job, in many cases. For homeowners concerned about the BTK killings, Rader was a census field operations supervisor for the Wichita area in 1989, before the 1990 federal census. He became a dog catcher and compliance officer in Park City. In this position, neighbors recalled him as being sometimes overzealous and extremely strict. One neighbor complained he euthanized her dog for no reason. On March 2, 2005, the Park City Council terminated Raider's employment for failure to report to work a call-in. He had been arrested for the murders five days earlier. Raider was a member of Christ Lutheran Church and had been elected president of the church council. He was also a Cub Scout leader. On July 26, 2005, after Raider's arrest, his wife was granted an immediate divorce. Victim All of Raider's known crimes occurred in Kansas. He killed 10 people in total and collected items from each murder scene. He also intended to kill others, notably Anna Williams, 63 who in 1979 escaped death by returning home much later than he expected. Rader explained during his confession that he became obsessed with Williams and was absolutely livid. When she evaded him, he spent hours waiting at her home, but became impatient and left. When she did not return home from visiting friends, two of the women Rader had stalked in the 1980s, and one he had stalked in the mid-1990s filed restraining orders against him. One of them also moved away. Rader admitted in his interrogation that he had been planning to kill again. He had set a date, October 2004, and was stalking his intended victim. With the exception of Hedge and Davis, all victims' bodies were found on the date and at the location of death. Hedge was found eight days later on May 5, 1985, at East 53rd Street North between North Webb Road and North Greenwich Road in Wichita. Davis was found 13 days later on February 1, 1991, at West 117th Street North and North Meridian Street in Sedgwick. Case History 
Rada was particularly known for sending taunting letters to police and newspapers. He authored many communications from 1974 to 1979. The first was a letter that had been stashed inside an engineering book in the Wichita Public Library in October 1974 that described, in detail, the killing of the Otero family in January of that year. In early 1978, he sent another letter to television station Cake in Wichita, claiming responsibility for the murders of the Oteros. Shirley Vian, Nancy Fox, and Catherine Bright. He suggested many possible names for himself, including the one that stuck, BTK. He demanded media attention in this second letter, and it was finally announced that Wichita did indeed have a serial killer at large. A poem was enclosed titled, Oh, Death to Nancy, a parody of the lyrics to the American folk song, Oh, Death. In 1988, after the murders of three members of the Fager family in Wichita, a letter was received from someone claiming to be the BTK killer, where he denied being the perpetrator of this crime. He credited the killer having done admirable work. It was not proven until 2005 that this letter was in fact written by Rader, and he is not considered by police to have committed this crime. By 2004, the investigation of the BTK killer was cold. Then, Rader began a series of 11 communications to the local media that led directly to his arrest in February 2005. In March 2004, the Wichita Eagle received a letter from someone using the return address Bill Thomas Kilman. The author of the letter claimed that he had murdered Vicky Wegerl on September 16, 1986 and enclosed photographs of the crime scene in a photocopy of her driver's license, which had been stolen at the time of the crime. Before this, it was not definitively established that Wegel was killed by BTK. DNA collected from under Wegel's fingernails provided police with previously unknown evidence. They then began DNA testing hundreds of men in an effort to find the serial killer. Altogether, over 1,300 DNA samples were taken and later destroyed by court order. In May 2004, a letter with chapter headings for the BTK story, fake IDs and a word puzzle were received by television station Cake in Wichita. On June 9, 2004, a package was found taped to a stop sign at the corner of First and Kansas in Wichita. It had graphic descriptions of the Otero murders, and a sketch labeled, The Sexual Thrill Is My Bill. Also enclosed was a chapter list for a proposed book titled The BTK Story, which mimicked a story written in 1999 by Court TV crime writer David Law. Chapter 1 was titled, A Serial Killer Is Born. In July, a package was dropped into the return slot at the downtown public library containing more bizarre material, including the claim that he was responsible for the death of 19-year-old Jake Allen in Argonia, Kansas earlier that month. This claim was false, and the death was ruled a suicide. In October 2004, a manila envelope was dropped into a UPS box in Wichita. It had many cards with images of terror and bondage of children pasted on them, a poem threatening the life of lead investigator L.T. Ken Landwehr, and a false autobiography, with many details about Raider's life. These details were later released to the public. In December 2004, Wichita police received another package from the BTK killer. This time, the package was found in Wichita's Murdoch Park. It had the driver's license of Nancy Fox which was noted as stolen from the crime scene, as well as a doll that was symbolically bound at the hands and feet, and had a plastic bag tied over its head. In January 2005, Raider attempted to leave a cereal box in the bed of a pickup truck at a home depot in Wichita, but the box was discarded by the truck's owner. It was later retrieved from the trash after Raider asked what had become of it in a later message surveillance tape of the parking lot from the date revealed the distant figure driving a black jeep cherokee leaving the box in the 
pickup. In February, more postcards were sent to Cake, and another cereal box left at a rural location was found to contain another bound doll, apparently meant to symbolize the murder of 11-year-old Josephine Otero. In his letters to police, Rader asked if his writings, if put on a floppy disk, could be traced or not. The police answered his question in a newspaper ad posted in the Wichita Eagle saying it would be safe to use the disk. On February 16, 2005, Rader sent a purple 1.44 megabyte Memorex floppy disk to Fox TV affiliate KSAS TV in Wichita. Also enclosed were a letter, a gold-colored necklace with a large medallion, and a photocopy of the cover of a 1989 novel about a serial killer. Police found metadata embedded in a deleted Microsoft Word document that was, unbeknownst to Rader, on the floppy disk. The metadata contained Christ Lutheran Church, and the document was marked as last modified by Dennis. An internet search determined that a Dennis Rader was president of the church council from the Home Depot incident. The police also knew BTK owned a black Jeep Cherokee. When investigators drove by Raider's house, they noticed a black Jeep Cherokee parked outside. The police had strong circumstantial evidence against Raider, but they needed more direct evidence to detain him. They obtained a warrant to test the DNA of a pap smear Raider's daughter had taken at the Kansas State University Medical Clinic when she was a student. The DNA of the pap smear was a process by the Kansas Bureau of Investigation at their lab in Topeka, and demonstrated a familial match to the DNA of the sample taken from victim Vicky Wegler's fingernails. This indicated that the killer was closely related to Raider's daughter, and was the evidence the police needed to make an arrest. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.